So what happened was you left him because you didn't think he matched up or added up to what you needed or wanted in a man, right? But then only to find out that the one you left him for, the grass that you thought was greener on the other side was turf. And so it didn't pan out with that other person like how you wanted it to, like how you expected it to, like how you thought it should. Because you couldn't control that man and you couldn't manipulate him neither. So now your ass is trying to come crawling back to him, pleading and begging and apologizing because you see that he really was a good man. You see that he really was good for you. No, baby, he done moved on. You're lost. Just say this. If she loved you and if she cared about you, then that will come through in her actions. It would show forth in her actions. How does she treat you? If she treats you like shit, then you're going to have to figure out, does she really care? Does she really love me? Because at the end of the day, a person will show you how they feel about you by their actions. Have a good day. Let me tell you something. A little girl who does not want to submit to her man or submit to her person or cater to her person is just that, a little girl. A woman who has grown up, who has done her work and who has leveled up and who has learned from her mistakes and wants to do better and wants to create better, not only for herself, but also for her man, those are the ones that will submit to you. Those are the ones that are true women. Those are the ones that have done their work. Those are the ones that y'all need to be seeking. What happens is y'all say y'all want a real woman, but yet you seeking out little girls. Fuck out of here. So let me get this straight. You're married to him, right? You guys are actually married. You guys are in a committed connection. You guys are only with each other. But yet when he wants it, you don't want to give it to him. But then when you want it, you convince him to lay down with you, right? But then all this time passes in between. And so what happens is you're teaching him to no longer desire you. You're teaching him to no longer want you. And then when he doesn't come towards you, then you're like, oh, well, is he cheating? Something's wrong. But when he does come towards you, then you deny him. So what is it that you want him to do? Because at the end of the day, if you signed up to be the sole provider of this man and you are expecting him to only be with you, then why aren't you providing that one thing that only you can provide, that you signed up to provide? Fuck out of here. Let me just say this, just because you weren't raised a certain way does not mean you get to make excuses for bad, fucked up, dysfunctional behavior now. Because what happens is once you become an adult, then you have choices to make. And so you can either choose to go one way or you can choose to go the other way. If you're continuously going down paths of destruction, I understand that you may not have had an upbringing that helped you to do so, that helped you to be the woman that you are called to be today. But it is up to you as an adult woman now to make better decisions for yourself so you can be the best for yourself and those around you. Let me just say this. Some of y'all is slacking in your macking and simping in your pimping. And you want to know why? It's because you sitting up there recruiting bitches for your own men. You recruiting bitches for your spouse. You recruiting bitches for your own husband by running your mouth. You think you just telling your friend. You think you just telling your cousin. You think you just telling your auntie. When all the while you have no clue who they going back and telling. And they sitting up here watching. They watching your marriage fall apart. They watching your connection fall apart. And then here they come snatching them y'all gonna be mad at this but you know what it's neither here nor there i really don't give a shit um y'all sit up here y'all be talking about oh well i did all of that and he still cheated he still stepped out he still did this he still did that so you still steadily playing victim right but the thing that most of y'all forgot to add when you say that oh he still did all this is the fact that this person he showed you who he really was he showed you that he didn't love about love you he showed you that he didn't care nothing about you yet you still kept on fucking him you still kept on wanting to spend time with him because your ass was lonely and you hadn't got with yourself and figured out what you really wanted in life so any type of warm environment or warm body or any kind of attention that you got that's what you gravitated towards so don't sit up there and keep on playing i did all that and he he left me and he cheated he did this girl part of that is your fault
part of that is your fault because you knew who the fuck he was and you still kept messing with him. You knew that he didn't want to be with you. You knew that he wasn't going to cater to you in the ways that you needed and the ways that you wanted. You knew that he didn't want to spend no time with you except for to lay down. But you still kept on, didn't you? You still kept on after that connection because you was lonely and you wanted to have three or four and you, you you wanted to have all your cake and you wanted to eat it too. But then when he wanted to have all his cake and eat it too, it was a problem, right? You have to understand it wasn't that he was the wrong one. It was the fact that your ass probably saw all them signs before, but yet you still kept on messing with him. Your ass was lonely. You wanted a warm body. You wanted to screw. You wanted to get that nut off. So don't tell me that, oh, I was good to a man and he wasn't good to me that's actually your fault because you know you saw the red flags you know you saw the flags and you start and you try to turn them pink girl they was red from the gate that's that's on you boo let me tell you about a real man when a real man loves you and a real man cares for you i'm telling you right now you're going to get that gas tank filled up without him saying and without you saying anything you're going to get what you need when it comes to that bedroom you're going to get what you need emotionally without saying it you know why because he is attentive to you and he's watching you and he's being careful with you and he's making sure that you have everything you need he's providing he's taking care of every single thing that you need but what happens is a lot of y'all when you have a good man you don't cater to him you don't do his nails. You don't do his feet. You don't shut the fuck up when he gets home so that way he can have some quiet time. You don't, when he's stressing, you don't give him quiet time in order to process. That's on you. You keep on running the good ones away. Go get the fuck out of here. And you know something else that needs to be addressed, ladies, is the fact that this man can be going through something and you won't even support him emotionally. But on top of that, you wonder why after he gets through it himself, after he pulls himself out of that, after he pulls himself out of the darkness, you wonder why your relationship, you wonder why your bond is strained. It's because when he needed you the most, you weren't there. Have a good day. And let me just say this as well. A lot of y'all older women are supposed to be there to uplift these younger women. You're supposed to teach them up in the way they should go. You're supposed to be there to mentor them. You're supposed to be there to uh, uh, um, uh, impart wisdom and knowledge and experience that you've gone through. So that way they don't fall into the same snare. But what happens is y'all sit up here and you talk bad about these younger ones instead of imparting wisdom. So you part of the problem as well. To all y'all wiser women out there, start to act more wise and start to really teach these younger women around you the right way in which the way they should uh, uphold themselves as a woman, but also the, also the way they should treat their men. And let me just say this. Until she is ready to change, she is not going to change. Until she sets aside her pride and her ego, she's not going to change. Until she wants to level up and do better for herself and those around her, including you as her person, as her man, as her spouse, she is not going to change. The ones that want to change for the better will change for the better. If they don't, then they're going to keep on going around the same mountain, the same circle, and they're going to lose a good man. Get the fuck out of here. Ladies. If you want to be an above and beyond spouse, then you have to show it with your actions. I'm going to give you a list of 13 things that you can do to go above and beyond for him. One, listen to him when he speaks and do not interrupt. Two, have a shower waiting for him when he comes home from work. Three, Make sure you're offering or giving him massages at least once a week. He works hard and make sure there is a happy ending. Four, cook his favorite meals instead of asking him to pick something up on the way home and instead of eating out. Girl, if you don't know how to cook, get off of social media, go on YouTube, go on the cooking channel, or either call me, I got your back. Five, do your inner work, do your inner healing. Make sure that you are creating peace within yourself. He should not have to live in an environment of chaos and trauma all the time just because you're choosing to not dig out your stuff or choosing to not go to therapy. You have to make sure that you're doing your work. It is not your responsibility to give him peace but it is your responsibility to have an atmosphere of peace within yourself that can add levels and layers to his own internal peace that he's created for himself. Six, 
make sure that you're not nagging and complaining, but that you're coming to him with calmness and peace and telling him what it is that you want, need, or, or need for him to understand. Number seven, make sure that you're allowing him to rest peacefully in your bosom as you rub his head, his temples, his scalp, and his chest. There is something so comforting and nurturing and peaceful to a man when he knows that his woman has internal peace and he can lay there and he can feel that peace and it rejuvenates him for everything that he has going on in the world. Number eight, and this is super important, ladies. Make sure that you're praying for him while he's asleep and while he's awake. Make sure that one, he knows that you have that spiritual side of things locked down. Make sure you're praying for him when he's awake. Touch him, lay hands on him and pray for him when he's awake. And also do that when he's asleep. Make sure that you're creating spiritual peace within your environment, within your atmosphere, and helping him to create that within himself. Number nine, make sure that you're surprising him with his favorite grooming products. Whatever it is that he uses to smell good, look good, feel good, make sure that he has an endless supply in stock of that. Thank me later. Number 10, and this is super imperative, ladies. Make sure that you're able to regulate and master over your emotions. No man wants an angry woman that's always flying off the handle. Make sure that you're ruling over your thoughts so that your thoughts do not rule over your spirit. Number 11, look him in his eyes every single day and affirm him. Let him know how much you appreciate him. Let him know that you're there for him and that you're not going anywhere and that you will support him thoroughly. Number 12, let him know that you forgive him for his past faults or for his past mistakes. Don't beat him up over the head with old stuff. Make sure that you're doing what you need to do to forgive him and then move on accordingly. But you don't sit up there and repeat, repeatedly bring up old stuff. That's another thing that will drive him away. If you want to keep him, forgive him and move on from it. Get some maturity about yourself. Number 13 is one of the most important ones because it is one that guys often, often, often say that they don't get. Make sure that you're telling the truth and you're staying loyal and that you are taking accountability for your actions and apologizing when you are wrong. If you don't know what a real apologize is, ladies, then make sure you go back to my apology post and get some pointers and tips and act accordingly. Do these 13 things, ladies, and I promise you, things will get better. I promise you, you will be able to see results within your connection. I promise you that this will work. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do and he's doing what he's supposed to do, you can come together and make such a strong union. Have a good day. This is what I need to know. Who taught you how to be a prostitute? Who taught you or is teaching you how to be a prostitute? Why do you think that you need to sell yourself? You need to sell your time. You need to sell your body. You need to sell your throat. You need to sell your box. You need to sell your vaginal canal. Like who taught you how to be a prostitute? He can't talk to me unless he cash at me. Huh? He can't take me on a date unless he cash at me. Huh? Well, if I'm giving it up to him, shouldn't he be paying for something? Prostitution. Who taught you how to do it?